The reality show Pawn Stars is a fan favorite on the History Channel and viewers have watched as Chumley and the Harrisons have struck huge deals for sometimes innocuous looking items. The biggest payouts on the show were made to customers who had valuable pieces of history to sell, but they are also the trickiest ones as they often turn out to be complete scams. Obviously, the value of the items brought to the show is completely subjective and dependent on lots of factors, like the rarity and condition, as well as how desperate the seller is for quick cash. Though plenty of items featured on the show are bought as good deal for both parties, more often than not, the viewers get to witness some deals that are over or undervalued, leaving one side ripped off. Because of that, the pawnbrokers usually decide on bringing in an expert, but occasionally a confidently made hasty sale ends up a horrible error in judgment. With that said, let's see 10 Pawn Stars deals that flopped terribly. Not only does every pawn shop need authentication for items that allegedly belong to some famous person, but it also makes incredible efforts to ensure that the items it takes on complies with state and local laws and regulations. But in one episode from season 7, the guys from the Pawn Stars ended up buying a 2,000 year old Tyrian shekel, a coin which historians believe Judas would have been traded when he betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Unfortunately, a detective arrived at the shop to inform them that the coin was stolen. However, not by the seller who was featured in the episode, but by a previous owner of the coin. In the end, they were able to keep it because the original owner had been compensated by his insurance policy. But the purchase didn't have a happy ending after all, since it turned out Rick had paid way too much for the coin by giving $1,600. Despite its rarity, a shekel of tire would usually only be worth around $1,200, but that one had lost a lot of value because it had been previously cleaned. Cars are some of the most interesting things that come into the shop. The owners are typically quirky individuals with some skeletons in the closet, some of which we never find out. Rick and his team have to take these people at face value, though he often calls in experts like Danny Coker to make sure he's not getting ripped off. However, this particular car was bought by Corey, a decision he made purely for his own reasons as he wanted the car for himself. Though Rick voiced concerns over his son's lavish spending habits, Corey was persistent to buy a 1969 Chevrolet Camaro Z28 for $40,000, but that decision proved to be a mistake as he eventually put it on sale in various venues for prices of $50,000, $65,000, and even $100,000, but it never sold. Unfortunately, Hegarty values the car at just $36,000, making this quite a terrible purchase. If you have heard about a folk rock group named Crosby, Stills & Nash, then you must know who Steven Stills is, and if you haven't, then we should tell you he is a famous rock legend whose guitar somehow found its way to the shop. Needless to mention, Rick was impressed and he knew he had to have it. The magnificent 1941 Gibson SJ200 guitar was even more valuable to him as it was signed by Steven himself. Since guitar collectors and music lovers especially prize Gibsons for their clear tone and fine construction, a 1941 Gibson guitar can fetch a high price, but this guitar is extra valuable because of who originally owned it. So, when a customer walked into the shop with a guitar owned by the man who wrote for what it's worth, the Harrisons were immediately interested. On its own, this guitar would be worth $75,000, but an expert said that because it had belonged to Stephen Stills, its worth was $105,000. Rick offered the seller $85,000 and shockingly the seller agreed on selling the guitar for a much lower price than it could be sold elsewhere. Chumley became confident in himself pretty early on on the show, so he thought it was about time he would buy some cool items, which was why he decided to purchase a piece of art for $300. Needless to mention, it was fake, which annoyed the old man so much, he said that Chumley shouldn't ever deal in art since he couldn't even tie his shoes. However, instead of getting angry with him, surprisingly Rick decided to try and teach Chum how to distinguish fake etching from a real one. He began by telling him how the artist uses a copper plate, puts a layer of wax over it, and then uses a metal pen to scratch through. Once the picture is finished, he takes the wax off and puts the ink on the picture that can now be seen on the copper plate. In the end, he presses a piece of paper to transfer the picture on it, which is precisely where Chumley needed to look for the traces. The pressing would have left the dent in the paper since the copper was pressed into it with a great weight. Not only did the etching miss the dent, but it was also obvious that the quality of the paper wasn't good since it should have been acid-free and not turn yellow. 
The old man was the most experienced member of the pawn shop, so it was almost impossible for someone to even try and scam him. However, this does not mean that someone hasn't succeeded in that. In 2014, Richard accepted to host a party for members of the notorious Vargas motorcycle gang, to which he was connected by his son Joseph. Two people who claimed to be from a motorbike community that liked helping people presented him an idea of organizing a Valentine's Day party at his Las Vegas home. Little did he know that the reality was far from the concept they presented him. Instead of going to charity, the money went to individuals who had troubles with the law. They redirected all the funds to pay lawyers for the members that committed various crimes and cover the legal costs for 32 arrested members. After the incident, his son Rick said that the old man just thought he was lending his fame to a charitable cause, but that he wasn't surprised much by the method they had used on him. When a seller came to the shop with an exquisite samurai sword, he was hoping to trade it for a nice prize since he knew swords and weapons are a major fixture in every pawn shop. Just before the haggling started, Corey admitted via backroom confessional that he'd seen a few of these sell for thousands of dollars, which is why his opening offer of $800 was laughably shady. After some negotiating, they struck a deal at $1,500, which was obviously a steal, but the unprepared lawyer was extremely happy. Well, we're not sure if he was still feeling that way when he later watched the show and found out the sword's value was five to six thousand dollars in its current condition, but it could be sold for a whopping fifteen thousand dollars if Corey would pay a three thousand dollar restoration. Though luckily the next scam attempt didn't go through, it is still worth mentioning as the buyer was really confident in himself. He came to the shop in 2013 trying to buy an NBA ring for a much lower price than it's worth. The ring in question was worth $11,000, but this man claimed it was worth only $5,500. The man seemed paranoid as he brought pictures of another 1975 Golden State Warriors ring and compared them, only to conclude that they are the same. Apparently his plan was to pretend to be a professional jeweler and claim the ring to be a in which would then make Rick very uncomfortable so he would sell it to him for a much lower price. He even brought a tester and started inspecting the diamond until Rick told him his tester was cheap and brought his own. Rick was trying his best to keep it cool, although it was obvious he was pretty intimidated by the man who was apparently trying to perform a scam. A season 15 episode aptly named Chum's Risky Business showed a woman who came to the shop carrying seven boxes of old comic books she'd inherited from her uncle. The seller had originally asked for $2,000 before striking a deal with Chumley for $500. Chumley concluded the date of the comics from the 70s or 80s, the period that was also known as the Bronze Age of Comics, and thought he could find the diamond in the rough. Unfortunately, after an expert checked the comics out, it turned out that once again Chumley had made a bad deal, as he said that the comics would sell for about $200 if the Pawn Stars were lucky. It goes without saying that Rick was pretty angry about the whole thing. When Jennifer Beckman came to the shop with a collection of pretty valuable gold coins, she managed to net $12,375. However, they soon turned out that they had actually been stolen. According to a criminal complaint filed by the state of Nevada, Jennifer Beckman had stolen a coin collection from her uncle David Walters, who had valued them at up to $50,000. Walters reported the theft on November 27, 2013, and then on December 5th, Detective Watkins contacted the shop and attempted to place a hold on the coins so they could be returned to Walters. But there was another problem. While Nevada law regulates that pawn shops must hold items for 30 to 90 days in case owners would like to buy them back or police need to identify stolen items, it turns out coins are not included under items that must be held, and the shop's owners are free to do with them what they want. So the crew decided to melt the coins down, and it turned out they weren't worth what Walters thought they were worth. In the end, Jennifer was sent to jail, and once again, Rick got scammed. When a customer visited the Golden Silver Pawn Shop with a statue of Perseus and Pegasus made by Emile Louis Picoult in the second season episode Flight of the Chum, he was really hoping to make some money. But he was faced with Rick who was familiar with Picoult's work and because of that, he knew that his statues were highly collectible and worth thousands of dollars, so he gave the customer's item a thorough look. It took only a few seconds for Rick to become suspicious when he found markings on the statue that did not match the period it was produced in. He also found markings engraved on the statue 
showing that it had been made in the United States, and since the artist is French, this confirmed that the statue was a reproduction. This statement, however, really made the customer angry with Rick. Agitated, he screamed at Rick that he was full of shit. As the tension culminated, the pawn shop security guard Antoine began walking toward the customer in case an intervention was needed. Luckily, the old man diffused the situation by calmly yet firmly explaining that they were not interested in buying the statue.